guys, I'm Nancy, and I'm going to show you... In this Mathematica tutorial, I'm going to review Nancy's video, but in particular, I'm going to show you how you can produce a nice graphic like what she has here, because of course I'd like to be able to present in a way like she does, because she does a really great job with this presentation of the derivative, what is the derivative, and uh, what happens as the step size h reduces down to zero, and you end up with the um, slope of the tangent line. Right, so I'm going to do my best to show you in Mathematica how to reproduce this diagram that she has. So if you're interested in that, let's get into it. Okay, so here I have uh, the photo of Nancy that I've imported into Mathematica with the diagram there. And you can see up above that I have the, um, the actual diagram. Now that's a manipulate tool, so I'll just show you straight away what it does. So I have the quadratic function. Now it's not quite the same quadratic function as the one she has, um, but I've got the definition of the limit in there on the left hand side just as she has. Um, now that limit is defined, um, or sorry, that derivative is defined as the limit when that limit exists. Okay, but you can um, move this slider across and reduce the step size as she's describing in this video uh, so that the step size approaches zero and this mimics the process of taking the limit as h goes to zero. So h is that little step size there, the horizontal distance between the two black points on the x-axis. Right now you can see what's happening to the slope of that tangent line. It's approaching the actual slope of well, the tangent, right? Or the slope of the secant is approaching the slope of the tangent. Okay, but I'm here to tell you how to produce this diagram so you can use that in your teaching. Alright, so you can see that I've got quite a lot of code up here. Um, so the first thing we want to do is build a function uh, that is the function to be differentiated. Alright, so in this case we just have uh, f square bracket x and then underscore and then we just use a colon equals to build a function in Mathematica. So here I have x squared plus 1. Next I want to build the point um, p to take the tangent at. Alright, so I have um, the point x comma f of x, to, um, and we're going to calculate f dash of x at that point. Okay, so here I use the function that I've built above and describe the point with the curly brackets um, as 1 comma f of 1. Next, I need a, a region to plot this in. And notice that I'm building it in such a way that I can automate this entire process and just change the function from the beginning and do this for a different function. Okay, so next we want to um, just write a plot or build a plot. Um, we're going to call this uppercase A. So build the plot that consists of the plot of f of x and x ranges from um, the first point of the domain. So this is indexing, pulling out the first point of the domain, pulling out the second point of that plot domain, uh, and so it, x is ranging from this point to this second point. Okay, so that will build a plot. Now I won't show you that. Uh, you can run that yourself. Next what we want to do is build a function of that step size h. Uh, and what it's going to do is going to build a, uh, a collection of points and plot those points using list plot. Okay, and so the points that we're going to plot are the point P, which is this one up here, then the point A comma F of A, which is um, at the other end of the secant. All right, so that'll be that black point at the top of the secant to start with, but it depends on A. Next, we want this point directly on under the um, 
the point P but on the axis. So that's why I say take the first component of P and then the second one put zero. All right, so underneath the point A comma F of A, we want this point A comma zero uh, so that we can show the step size H decreasing. Okay, and then I want to change um, the points to black color and increase the point size. So these are options there. Next, I want some vertical dashed lines uh, connecting um, this point here to this point here, and likewise the point P connect to the point underneath it. Okay, so vertical dashed lines, but I'm doing this with a function again. So it's a function of lowercase h, the step size, and then I've got some graphics commands for building um, such lines using the line function. Okay, um, however, I haven't talked yet about module. So in this, I'm building my function with module. This is a built-in function that allows you to put things into memory temporarily that you're going to use several times in the function and have it not be remembered outside that function. For example, I wanted to set A as the x coordinate. So this is uh, x plus h. So this is the one that's over a little bit. And I use it several times in here, as you can see. Okay, so that's what module does there. Now, um, next we want the line. So this is the secant line that becomes the tangent line. Um, but I also build this piece of graphics as a function of the step size h. Uh, and I use module to do that because I want to put several things into memory temporarily to use repeatedly. Okay, so that's A, which we've talked about. M is the slope of the secant. C is the uh, constant term in the description of the line. So in other words, we have the line y equals mx plus c. Uh, and so this is what we're building here. Okay, so m has a formula, it's just rise over run. And then c, uh, there's another simple formula for that, but you can work that out on paper what it should be. And then we're just plotting mx plus c with a traditional plot here. Uh, and the plot range is x going from the first domain point up there, so minus 3 in this case, to 5. Um, and then I've changed the plot style and said that I want this secant line to be red. Okay, next, here is the um, code for putting the text in that describes the definition of the limit, or definition of the derivative, sorry. Okay, so I'm using the text function there, and I've got the two um, inverted commas, are they called? Yeah, to say I want this to come out as, as a string rather than exact um, code. Okay, then this here is the place where I want that to go on the graphic. Okay, and almost finally is uh, another function here again using module, but this function is going to plot text um, and I'll, I'll just show you, it's the text that goes above the slope and below that saying the exact numerical value that the slope takes on at that given h step and the, the h value itself at that given point in the slider. Okay, so I'd have, I had to put take averages certain points to um, to place those where I wanted and then even add two to that to get it to go above the secant. All right and now finally um, we want to use the manipulate command but what I'm doing is I'm putting in in the body of this I'm putting show so I've collected all of those graphics a, b, g, h, t, and v that I've built as functions above showing all of those together uh, but it's getting ma manipulated in terms of h so as h decreases um, that's why we need functions here functions of h because we want to decrease this as a function of h but um, the plot range I need to fix uh, otherwise it will change accordingly 
So I need to fix the plot range to go from, say, minus 10 on the y-axis to um, f of the second coordinate of the domain. And then h uh, ranges from the second coordinate of the domain, minus 1, um, and down to 0 0.1, because if I make it 0, then I get some kind of error in the plot, which I don't want. Okay, so I go almost there. All right, and then finally we can run it. Um, so I'll press Shift and Enter, and that's just created it again. And then we can see what happens um, as that decreases. We see this secant line uh, approaching the tangent line. Great. Now, can we change the function? Well, the answer is yes, and all we have to do is come up here and change um, the original function up here. So for example, what if we change this to x cubed plus 1? Let's have a look. I'll run it. Uh, you can see now we have a cubic function. What happens if I slide this? Well, it still works. Um, so great. Now, can we get anything more exotic? Let's have a go. What about um, x cubed plus x sine of x? All right, and so let's try the slider. This doesn't look a lot different, does it? So maybe what I want to do is write something like 1 over x plus x sine x. OK, and now you can see the problem here is that the, um, the plot range is not quite what we want. So let's just change this now um, to, say, minus 3. And I may even need to make this manual, um, but let's have a look. Okay, so this is a little bit different, right? So it doesn't make the greatest example. Now, yeah, I think I need to make this manual here. So I'll just copy that, but I'll put, um, say, plus 5 instead. All right, now we have a better picture there. So as we change this... Um, that's a really nice one, okay? So I think even because that st starts a little bit lower, what if we go down to minus 5? Maybe that gets a little bit better. Okay, that looks awesome. And that does a nice job of um, showing you how this manipulate function works and showing you how you can use that in your own teaching. Okay, so that's all for now. Uh, you can go and check out Nancy's video. It come up, comes up probably top on the list. This is very popular. Okay, bye for now.